In this week's episode, I talked to Sofia Broberger from Bonnier Broadcasting in Sweden about how she got into sourcing, sourcing for tech in Stockholm, and what she's planning to get out of attending SourceCon in Budapest. I, of course, started off the interview by asking Sofia how she got into sourcing. I kind of just fell into it, as everybody else says. No, but really, really, I did. I, I worked for a, um, a language service company selling uh, courses as in Swedish or English or whatever. Um, and I didn't like it there, I wanted to change jobs. So I looked for various jobs, just applied for pretty much everything. I didn't know what I wanted to do and I applied for an account manager job at a recruitment company. So I went there for an interview, met with this guy and he was like, no, nah, you're not going to be an account manager, but you could do, be a researcher as in as a sourcer. I'm like, yeah, what's that? So he explained to me what it was. I had no idea before I went there. And I was like, yeah, sounds good, I'll do that. So that's how I started. So I just got a job as a researcher without really knowing what it was. And I was there for three and a half years and then I changed to this. Where do you start to kind of know what to do? Just, well, the way they were working, it was pretty much LinkedIn and call people. Mm. And to be fair, four and a half years, well, five years ago, that still worked. Yep. <laughs> you could do that. You actually, people actually answer the phone. Uh, so you just did that and then you know when you realize you know you felt like you've emptied linkedin you're kind of looking at what can i do oh there's something called meetup or oh, i'll have a look at these groups and whatever that is and just trial and error trying out new things and uh i know i tried talent thin for a bit and i liked that but then i was the only person using it so they got rid of it <laughs> and um <laughs> and just trying different things and then i wanted to try more things than i think it within the kind of recruitment uh, agency they're not very innovative. They just, mm. they just have to deliver and they don't really give you any time to, to play around. No, it's not a lot of tool testing. It's, it's all about get results of what you have. No, we've always used the phone. So keep using the phone. Do it. <laughs> so um, so I I'm got away from there and I think in the last year, because I'm the only recruiter here. Um, oh, wow. I'm the only one. And so I'm the sort of expert, specialist, whatever you want to call it. So I... I can do exactly what I want, how I want it, when I want it. Um, so it's given me the, the kind of time to read and learn and, and do more fun things. So how did you structure it? I mean, it sounds similar to uh, Susanna coming in with uh, with Universal Music as well and kind of saying, I'm it. So if they need, you know, talent research and, and sourcing and things like that, like I have to tell them what it is. How did you kind of structure that from, uh, for, for Bonnier? Uh, in terms of what you then can offer them and, and get them on board with it? Well, there was a recruiter here when I started. Um, so I came in on a maternity leave cover. And then there's been some reorganization. So I'm still here, but I'm on like a short-term contract. I just tell them what I do and they tell me what, I, what they want and I deliver. So they trust me kind of thing. They say they want this, I give them that. And then so they give me free reign because obviously they realize that what i what i do works so they don't need to question it yeah that's good and, and, and in terms of tools like you know have what what you've kind of brought in or what works in sweden well, and, and you're doing finland as well i think no actually mtv is part of not mtv the music but mtv the finnish tv channel is part of bonnie broadcasting but i don't i don't touch that so i'm basically i'm well sweden but not only sweden i'm like stockholm this is my bubble this is where i am uh, <laughs> but um one of the first things that I brought in, because when I first came here, they just signed up for a LinkedIn recruiter account for another year. And to me, when I'm the only recruiter in house, I don't see the necessity to have the full recruiter account. Yeah, especially when your area is, you know, IT, IT in Stockholm. Yes. It's, so, not, it's not like you, and, need, you, you know, need access to 500 million LinkedIn users. They might no, no, no. I mean, my, my, I think my, my contact is four, four, thousand, four or 5,000 on LinkedIn. Yeah. And we just like recruit a light account. You have that and all the third, you know, that's big enough for me. Yeah. I don't need more. So, but they were stuck in that for a year. So, but now I'm using recruit a light instead because I really think money wise, it's not worth it. Uh, but the one of the first thing that I brought in was Lever, mm -hmm. and mainly because of the Lever nurture feature. Mm -hmm. I love that. I don't think I could survive without it now. <laughs> no, seriously, because you know, just the one email or the say I, I had a chain of uh, or a workflow of four 
emails in total. And it really works. Yeah. And and for me to, to not have a tool like that, I don't think I, I could manage. I feel a bit, you know, <laughs> no, I really need it. So Lever is, is what I brought in and, and really, really, really enjoy using. But then I use all other bits of tools like uh, Amazing Hire and all, all of those little bits and contact out. In the kind of great scheme of things, we're not using any external recruitment, anything like that. So, you know, it's just, we, we, I can do it. I can fill all the positions myself. Yeah. So if you look at paying for contact out for a year or paying for a recruitment agency, yeah. you know, it's, no, exactly. it's still cheaper. Yeah. And then you it's save money by going down to Recruiter Lite uh, version anyway. So Exactly. Yeah. So it still makes, it's, we still don't spend that much money on, on mm-hmm. recruitment if you look at it. In that sense. So I, I, I think it's worth it. I like that you're using uh, nurturing. Um, obviously, you know, following up is a big kind of pet peeve of mine. Um, most, and especially in the market where you're at, where you know the you know the market. You yeah. pretty much, you know, if you had time, you could identify everybody in that market that could potentially ever take your jobs. So if you burn them, they're burned, and it's like you're not going to come. Plus, yeah. they all know each other. So if you give yeah. somebody, a, you know, they will at some points like you need to keep in touch with them so yeah i like that you kind of grab that but i noticed there's a lot of people kind of replying to like the the third or fourth female saying oh sorry i didn't reply i took the first couple of things for spam so <laughs> so they kind of don't reply because they think that it's just a, yeah. <laughs> a generic one and then they realize that when you keep at it they kind of oh she really does want to talk to me it's it's me not just i'm not just a list of a 200 people no. like it's actually Even me. they are yeah but it's the perception i'm the same i'm like i don't i don't answer the first email either even though you know because i'm like especially for every recruiters that just write you're like first of all you send me an email if you really wanted me you would know how to find my contact details yeah exactly. um, and it's like i'm never gonna answer the first one and most of them they're never gonna contact you again so it's like, no. that's fine but it's like you keep doing that more 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 for the rest of us who actually follow up but I'm currently replying to everything because I'm looking at because I'm here till the end of year end of the year, and then I'm looking at doing my own uh, like yeah. business consultancy like you're doing. Yeah. Um, so I'm just replying to everyone, telling them that. Well, yeah. Like hopefully somebody uh, you're going to meet somebody in Budapest as well. That's uh, that's going to give you some good leads on on what to work on. No, but it should be fine. I mean, here in Stockholm, there's not um, there's a lot of IT recruiters or recruitment firms, but they're not. They don't really go beyond LinkedIn, but I, I think there's, there's, so there's, there's a lot of recruitment agencies here and a lot of recruiters, but like I said, it's kind of like, yeah, LinkedIn, sending in mails, and maybe somebody will say Stack Overflow, but they won't say anything more than other than just saying Stack Overflow. So, so I, I believe it's, if you're good at it, you, can, you know, you find a job. Yeah. No, and, I, I, and you... You're going to show the difference with the candidates as well. It's like, yes, I could use the same tools as everybody else, but one, using nurturing, you know, actually getting in there, finding people, finding all the developers and IT people who are not on LinkedIn because yeah. they are on other places. They're on Stack Overflow, they're on GitHub. They do actually hang out places. Just why would they be on LinkedIn? There's yeah. no benefit for them. No. But to be oh, fair, I, I always try and find people who are not on LinkedIn. And then I find them everywhere else and then I just find their LinkedIn profile anyway. <laughs> I think in the past five years, I've found probably two or three people that I've hired who don't have LinkedIn accounts. Yes. I found a few, especially when you go to meetups yeah. and source them that way, yeah. you end up finding a lot more. You're like, okay, I would never have found this person because no. the only reason I know that they're a developer is that they're in a java meetup community kind of thing exactly or like okay that i would never have found these people but no. yeah you find them other places and you're like this makes sense no i found some good people through meetup i like meetup because does yeah. you find the groups and you can kind of look at okay if they find somebody who's in these three groups yeah there we go that's the only one because you know that you don't have to look for keywords because like no. they have self-identified as you know interested an agile in person a java developer and somebody who's interested in scala like i don't have to yeah. see whether i know they've been in the java you know user community for the last five years so i don't have to question yeah. of whether they know what they're doing in that you know exactly. yeah that makes the, the, those therefore, data, therefore, data miner is my friend now as well because i remember the first time when i used when i found meetup you know i was going opening the profile <laughs> in a new window looking at it copy pasting into linkedin looking if they're there if they and then i did actually if they weren't i contacted them 
Yeah. I didn't contact them if they're on LinkedIn. Because you knew that somebody else had probably done that. Yeah. And I found an iOS, iOS developer that way. Now he's on LinkedIn, but he wasn't then. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it's good. But it was, you know, time consuming going through like a thousand profiles yeah. and Coco Headstock and Meetup Group, you know, kind of going. But I've done that. But now, you know, you know where to find them. You just find smarter ways of doing it. And like I said, in the past year, I've had the time to find the smarter ways. So even though that's taking a bit of time, it's now saving you time. So yeah. all in all, it works out for the better. So what's the kind of thing you're working on now that like, what's your newest pet project in terms of, of tools or, or it's something you're excited about? I, I say it's a data miner doing that. We're, we're uh, you know, grabbing all the data from the groups and kind of, you no, know, with, with the two groups and then corresponding to finding the duplicates going, yeah, they're both in these groups, go find them. And, and, um, and also the, the LinkedIn, um, well, the extension for, for Google Sheets, yeah. which just finds the LinkedIn profile for you, or the search results for the LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Love that. And then you just put it into the bulk URL of it. And you've got it. It's clickable. It's just, I don't have to click anything. It's just there. <laughs> so I, I, I like doing that a bit more. And I have so many open positions at the moment. I don't know where to start. Um, so I'm just going to go and pick one of them and just go into meetup groups and just um, go for it. But I also like... I'm trying to make this company have more meetups as well. Yeah. To kind of because I know we do um, uh, our integrations team do a lot of Go and Elixir, and for those we don't even have to put ads out to find people just because no. they find us. Yeah. So we just need to kind of be more out there with what we do so people come to us yeah. because we do cool stuff. And that's the thing is like once you have a good story, they're gonna find you. And it's yeah, as exactly. you say, if you start actually you know, hosting meetups and talking about, it's going to automatically come in there. It's like, why would you host a Go meetup here? It's like, well, because we work with it. And I, oh, interesting. Because yeah, yeah, like lots of people might be learning Go, but not in a company that does anything in production. Exactly. So if they can get into a company that actually does, you know, Go in a production environment, yeah. that's interesting. And that story in itself is going to make it something that they would want to look at. Because we actually get four Go and Elixir ads we actually get good applications. Mm. You know, where we've hired a couple of Elixir developers through just advertising. Yeah. Because they, they're they not many Elixir jobs, so they find us. Yeah. So it's, you know, you don't have, which is sort of, part of me, I don't like doing the ads because it's just, <laughs> you know, it, it's not difficult, isn't it? You know, anybody can put, post an ad and get yeah. applications. It's, you know, it's not a sport. I want to, you know, I want to, this person is here because of me, that's more fun. But it's still kind of nice when you do, when it's technology that's um, appealing to people that they want to apply, want to come work for us. It's, it's, it's supposed to mix. I guess it's not like we get hundreds of applications, but we'll get a few and those are good. But I try and do, because obviously I do, I do the sourcing and the whole kind of recruitment. I do everything up until, um, it's time to give them an offer. Once it's time to give them an offer, I kind of back off. Um, so I do all that. So I, I try and think all the kind of employee branding perspective as well and, and do all of that. Which is, that's when I do all the meetups and try and, you know, get the everyone to realise and prioritise the meetups. And, oh, there's so much to do, we can't do the meetups. So, but we're having a GraphQL meetup in two weeks. So finally got the meetup through. So that'll be fun. That's good. Cool. GraphQL as well. Yeah, you're... Joining us in uh, in in Budapest for SourceCon, what are you looking forward to? And you know, what do you kind of what are you what are you hoping to get out of it? I'm hoping to get lots out of it. I don't really know because, like I said, here in Stockholm, I try and go to to meetups or afterworks, and it's just so limited and basic that it's like, yeah, LinkedIn and emails. Well, tell me something I don't know. You know, give me something new. Give me you know something to play with, something to try out. So that's what I'm looking for and also to meeting everyone because i'm in the you know growth hacking recruiter group on facebook and you know it's meeting people that i'm chatting away to actually in person yeah <laughs> having my my because i don't hear because like i'm the only recruiter nobody else here at the company does what i do so i can't to talk to anyone about no, these stuff no. i want to meet the people and learn more things what other cool tools can I play around with? How can I do things? You know, like how can I automate things? Automate? I just want to automate everything. I don't want to do anything at work. I just want to automate stuff and sit back. It's all about knowing what to automate and how to, and then when it breaks, how to fix it. Because yeah, exactly. No, I just want to automate everything. Like I said, the nurture with Leather Nurture, I love that. 
because it's just I just click send and then you know after a couple of weeks I'll get a reply and going oh I suppose the emails went out last night I didn't realize <laughs> you know you just do things and things happen but, and, you know. so how do they work I like because I've, I've seen their you know, marketing material their um their report where if you use Leva Nurture you're gonna get a hundred percent response rate and I'm like yeah, yeah I get probably. a sixty nine percent reply rate actually <laughs> but I think that's quite good yeah. So do you set it all up yourself or do they have... Yeah, you write, you write all the emails that you want to send mm -hmm. in a workflow and you can create a workflow of, of however many emails you want. Yeah. And one of the features that are anonymous, but one of the things that I like about Leather Nurture when I've compared to like Beamery and other things that have similar features is that you can have multiple senders in the same workflow. Oh, cool. You can't do that with like Beamery. You can have multiple senders, but not in the same workflow. Mm. I can send an email in somebody else's name but what I do I send an email from me then it's an email from me then it's an email from the hiring manager so you know they get emails but it's in the same work. same sequence yeah yes so I like that so I write the emails you know I wrote very short concise to the point emails no long things um, I we have I created uh, we have a careers page that I wasn't too happy about. It's, a, it's the right careers page, but it's not really targeted at tech. Mm. So I created uh, our blog for our technology department, um, which is kind of, it's a blog, but it's a mini recruitment. <laughs> you it's know, like a landing page for you to, yeah, to kind of get. Yeah, so it's a bit of a career page, but I try and, you know, try and write content there. So we, we, we have the developers write content. I write content. I do interviews with um recent hires i do interviews with managers and also do like the um, so-called alumni interviews that's mm -hmm. the people that left the company uh and you know i can depending on what it is we're doing i will you know send links to various blog posts uh, in my emails to them and then you know i might send i don't ever send in the first email i don't send the ad mm. i'll send a link to some sort of blog post that's yeah. related, related to the job and then perhaps in the second email i kind of go oh, by the way it's a link to the ad. I forgot to send that with the last email, <laughs> which I didn't forget. It's all planned, you know. And what you can you can set the times exactly. You can say this should be sent uh, five working days. So you can say not just five days, yeah. five working days after the last email, and it should be sent up seven fifty-two in the morning. You can really, really customize it. Oh, cool. Very much so, and and then you know what to do if they don't reply. Obviously, they, they get the, if they don't reply, they get the email after so many days that you've said. But then what happens if they don't reply to the last one? You, know, you snooze them and then you get reminded after six months or after three months. It's cute. You can all, it's just all very easy to use and it's automated. Yeah. I just yeah. find the person once, click send, and then I just wait. <laughs> don't have to do anything more. I love that. Like I said, automate things and automate the whole kind of, like I said, with the meetup, just getting it down, getting it up again and open in, in tabs without having to do any clicking, really. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking at what other parts can I automate and how. What are you still missing a tool for? Or what is the kind of, what's the next thing you would love to just make more efficient? See, I don't know yet. I need to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> what can be more efficient? That's a good thing. Everything, I suppose. Finding the candidates. But I really, like, we're all talking about AI and machine learning and all of that for sourcing. I still, still don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. The ones that I'm most afraid of is the tools where, like, we'll find the people based on your string and then we'll automatically send them an email. And I'm like, no, you... No, 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 no. no I I would, that's the one thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever want the automation to decide who to contact. No, no, no. no. I want to be the one deciding who to contact and how. Yeah, no problem. They're using automation to give me more lists or give me more yeah. results based on what but like i don't need a lazy recruiter tool which but that's i mean no, that's no, what no. they're selling it as and it's exactly. some recruiters love that like oh i don't have to spend time on sourcing i just they automatically send the email on my behalf and i'm like no it's just, no because it's my name yeah it's yeah like exactly like you get more than those it's like why did you contact me You're like i have no clue what are you gonna say no. the ai chose you and send an email from my domain no 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 I don't want, I want to be the one pressing send. I don't mind the following up being automated. But no, then but it's also, you've that. automated that. If it's your workflows and you know exactly. what's in it, if you know what's in the email, then yeah. Then I can even, even if I have a, a standardized email, so to speak, you know, I can, I can personalize it for each person anyway, change and tweak parts of it and, you know, go about it. I can even, you know, I can 
personalize all of them, all the four emails if I want to. And it's, um, I do it to some extent, you know, it's, uh, you've got to write them. You've got to write the, the, um, the standardized email so that it seems as if it's personal. <laughs> Yeah, it has. I mean, we, you know, everybody uses templates, but it's, it's, it's about making it still about them without yeah. having to type the same thing over and over again. No, but you can always, you can add, you can add a sentence. You can make a little bit of a change to each and one of them, but it depends yeah. on the, it depends on what role, because some roles, obviously I can't find that many people. It might be 10 people I'm sending an email to. Obviously I'll, I'll personalize them. Yeah. All, but I know for our web team, I think I've, you know, I've been in touch with, hundreds of react front-end developers you know they haven't all got a personalized email <laughs> <laughs> but the whole we've done a lot of um we had a lot of consultants and we were kind of trying to replace them with with um, em well yeah. employees and the whole web team now is without consultants so we don't have any consultants in the web team anymore so i've done all that and you know i didn't have to write extremely personalized email it worked anyway yeah exactly you could you know, pick and choose. Obviously, I still believe in, you can tell a difference when you do spend a bit more time in what you write. But I try and tweak it all the time and change it and just change headings. That's what you do, you play around with it. Yeah. But like I said, I don't believe in, in automating that aspect, the whole kind of who to contact and what to say. That's what I mean. I, people talk about these chat bots and things and that might be okay for other, because the other part of our company, which is not IT, obviously because we're one of the major TV channels in Sweden, we get applications, we get you know, more applications than we want, kind of thing. Then I can see the use of you know, the chat bot on the website, you know, on the careers page, chatting away, but not when it comes to those people who are hard to find. Then, mm. then I really don't believe in, in bots to that extent, having a chat with them to interact and make them um, but in terms of for the kind of, you know, where you get lots of applications and everybody wants to work for you, fine, put a bot in there. Yeah, even just kind of like, okay, what's the, back, what's the best role for you? Like, you, you want to do this, you want to do that. Get the bot to kind of learn that and guide them in the right direction so you don't have those people who apply for every job on your website, just in case. Well, they do that anyway. <laughs> True. <laughs> I just wish I could I could leave the whole kind of application aspect to somebody else. They can deal with the applicants. I can deal with the sourcing aspect. Having to tell people no and they go, why well, do oh, I can't come for an interview? It's like, because you're completely wrong for the position. Go away. But I don't mind. Like I said, we, we had had good applications from like Alexa yeah. developers. I enjoy those. But it's the whole kind of when it's masses of people applying, they just want to get into this company. At any they're cost. not actually applying for the position. Yeah, they're just applying to the company, and I no, I don't want to deal with that aspect. That's not so. I'm sort of I'm a recruiter, but I'm I'm not a recruiter in, in that aspect. People think you know I don't look at CVs and go through applications. I also enjoy the interviews because I'm obviously our first interviews is with me and the hiring manager, mm. so we do the first interview together. I do enjoy that, and like you know, and I you know then I have to kind of. But the hiring managers here that I'm working with, they're really, really good. Mm. But, you know, I know that some people in certain companies, they have to, you know, come with the short list of people to the manager, kind of go, do you want to meet these? They trust me. I book them in. I, I don't show the profile to them until I book the interview in. <laughs> God. And they, they turn up to the interview, kind of go, okay. You know, they know that the people I book in are interesting. If I'm unsure of a person, I'll go check with them. You know, what yeah. do you think about this profile? But I'll do that before contacting them. Because I don't want to contact somebody and go, hi, we want to meet you. And by the way, no, we don't really. But most of the time, I, I know the roles. I know what they're after. That I didn't have to check with them. I just put people in. And it, it works. Yeah. Because I know that that's what I like about being also in-house, that I know the company. I can do that. Yeah. Whereas if you're a agency, you don't know the client. You just don't know the client. Even if you know the client, you're just not there. You don't know it yeah. to the same extent that you can just put people in straight to the hiring manager but I can do that and they're also when I worked in agency you got the, the clients who just oh we just want to meet some more can uh, candidates to compare you kind of stop it <laughs> this is a good candidate yeah they're really good I want some more no just this one. there might be somebody better yeah. whereas I haven't had that with any of my hiring managers here I was in one position that I had like a year ago I found one person we interviewed him and hired him so that was it they didn't ask for more it was good enough to hide him 
I love that. Uh, and they're all like that. They're never asking for, you know, they know we only need one. So most of the time I can find more than one. Yeah. But when I can't, and if it's a good person, they're not going to stop. They, they, they know that. They know it's, what the situation is like. Yeah, they're it's not going to be like, well, we could continue looking, but then we're going to lose this one. If somebody tells me maybe, I tell them, they're not allowed to say maybe. They're allowed to say <laughs> yes or no. But then I can't say, oh, I might. No, no, no. Yes or no. I said, you're allowed to say no. So you, you don't, you know, if you're not sure, say no. Yeah. But don't tell me maybe. Because it's kind of, we don't know when the next candidate's coming in. It could be tomorrow, it could be in a week, it could have been a month. So is this person good enough? Then we're going to move him forward. In, in, yeah, exactly. If they're not, we're going to say no. Yeah. I'd rather so say no say and, and be wrong than to string them along. No. So maybe it isn't allowed. Good. So, and my hiring managers, they know, they know me and they know how I work and they know not to say maybe. And if it's a new hiring manager, they'll learn. <laughs> that's good Maybe like you that. can just how did you find the tools that you're working with now then like what's your kind of research and and what forums or where do you kind of look to say how do i fix this and, and how do i automate this well lever i had as a um i went to one of the i think it's true stockholm a year ago mm -hmm. and it was another um recruiter there and he mentioned it and then i just remembered he talked about it and I said, that sounds great so i i emailed him like the next couple of days after going, what were the tools you're talking about? Tell me about them. So, and that's what I also believe when working in a recruitment agency, they were kind of, no, we're not allowed to talk anyway. We're not allowed to give away a secret. So very much <laughs> exactly. kind of well, a special sauce. So, you know, you can't tell them what, how we work. So it was kind of like, don't talk to another recruiters. And once I get out of that, I'm kind of, yeah, I can talk to that recruiter at that company. I can talk to him. I can talk to him. So I've just started talking to, I go for lunches every so often with recruiters and other companies kind of exchange ideas and, and discuss things because because I don't have my colleagues here in recruitment I have to talk about with my colleagues in other companies yeah so I've started doing that a lot more and also and then I found that you know Stockholm's getting too small in terms of recruiters it's just not <laughs> there are a few good good ones but I think it's just once I go when I've gone to these meetups and, and stuff and seminars and breakfast seminars it's just all very basic um, so I started kind of following various people on LinkedIn and obviously um, through the growth recruiting and Facebook group and growth hacking recruiters there. And I just, just find finding more and more people kind of internationally that are good yeah. and yeah. learning from them and reading. And, and obviously I, I got the Hung Lee newsletter, um, of course, who, who doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised there was only 61 people in Sweden who's got it. I'm like, what? But that's why I like having the international contacts and yeah. following them and, and chatting away and, you know, reading blogs and reading all the source con. I've yeah. obviously got the source con newsletter as well and, and webinars and all sorts. And, you know, sometimes you learn stuff, sometimes it's, it's the same old news as well. But you can always take something away from it and discussing yeah. it and finding out. Or just having, like, confirmed that the way I found is other people use it, so it's good kind of thing. Um, so I do that. I try and read and, and listen and, you know, I listen to your shows now, found them. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Kind of having a background as you're going into work. Uh, uh, it's good. Enjoy that. So lots of try and, and Googling, kind of finding how can I do this and doing yeah. that and doing this. One thing I haven't found, because I'm do, like I said, I mentioned I do the like um, alumni interviews on our yeah. blog. Haven't yet found somebody else who does that. I believe there should be somebody else that's doing this. I haven't found it. Sure, Fine. somebody will they know. Should some. be, if they know, they should. They should. Yeah, comment on this. Uh, on this uh, yeah. video and He's then. Doing and then Jews. Come on. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I was glad doing in Swedish, so you can't really look them up. But they're really good. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, you know, you have a bit of a funny language, but. Yeah. <laughs> what are you Danish? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Talking about funny language. <laughs> it's like Swedish, but you can't hear anything. Yeah. It's without singing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have this fight another time. <laughs> yeah, uh, always. Well, we, get, we, have, we have most of the week in Budapest, so I'm sure we can. Exactly. We, we can, we can do the same <laughs> fight going on then. It's the same. Yeah, I'm sure there's somebody in the community that kind of done something similar, and uh, yeah, we can get them. But, but I, I enjoy that, and I, I want to do more of it, and because I started it with our blog, um, and now... I know my, my manager here said they want to do that on our careers website for the whole company. Mm. So not just for the IT focus, but doing it for, for all of them. Because I really believe that's 
if somebody who's not working for us anymore, you know, six months after they left the company, six months or more, can still kind of vouch for us and say we're a good company. Yeah. I think that that's a lot more credibility in that than somebody working for us saying it's a good place. And I mean, these are people who are likely to come back again one day. Because I enjoy... I enjoy the sourcing part and I enjoy the kind of the interviews and I enjoy the, that sort of employee branding mm. aspect of it as well. Just not the applications. <laughs> <laughs> the inbound, yeah. It can go away. Because you're top of funnel. It's, sourcing is changing. Like you get a lot of automation and, you know, algorithms and things like that. Sources has to start taking the choice of do they want to go down into the funnel and do more and more recruitment stuff or do they want to go further up up funnel and do recruitment marketing and employer branding and this piece. Um, that's kind of a choice. It's like, cause just, just doing what most so-called sources are doing now of look at looking on LinkedIn and sending out emails. That's not well, going to, that's not going to be, and it's not going to be around for in a couple of years. No, and it's also only doing that is boring. You know, they'll get bored. That's why they want to get out of it. Yeah. When they don't realize what sourcing actually is. Yeah. That's why they think sourcing. it's a junior recruiter job. Cause it's like, yeah. Oh, you know, I just but do that- that's how I started it. You know, yeah. it's called the researcher and I said, yeah. do that. And it really was just that. Um, but doing the proper sourcing, you know, finding the new ways and kind of going, being innovative yeah. and, and technical, I suppose, you know, doing that. But it's also because you need to have the understanding for tech in order to talk tech to the, to the people as well. So being a bit technical yourself. But obviously when I was younger, I did all the HTML and all of that rubbish when you know just try to put as many gifts as you could in the page (laughs) a few years back when i was young um so you know i have all that i did actually i did a few like games in key basic when i was 12 and all sorts of stuff (laughs) so uh, you've got that technology in me uh, and i enjoy that aspect and and finding ways to use that for recruitment and that so that aspect of sourcing is fun the whole kind of Stay, being on LinkedIn all day long, doing nothing else. Of course, they want to move out of that and become a recruiter instead. Yeah, because that aspect is boring. But I don't think I'd ever want to. Well, not currently. I've not been in it that long as five years. But I don't want to leave the the sourcing aspect because I enjoy that. It's fun, you know, to find a person and to kind of go, yeah, this person is now working here because of me. Yeah, because of something I did. Um, obviously, they have. A, Part to play in the role, except the job. But you know, they wouldn't know of the job. They wouldn't, you know, applied. They wouldn't be there if it wasn't me. That's, but and to me, just the LinkedIn aspect. Of it, that's pretty much anyone else can do that as well. But being a bit more creative with that is a lot more fun. No, so I don't think I ever want to leave. I don't want to leave that. But I still like the kind of recruitment marketing aspect of it. But to me, which is going to be more and more as well. Like and having that. So I, I think one of the biggest problems in our industry is that marketing is like the recruitment marketing piece is even more disjointed from the rest of us like like sources and recruiters yeah, it depends on the company it's like we're more or less mm-hmm. integrated um some for the wrong reason because they think sorcerer is a junior recruiter yeah. but the marketing tends to be oh no i do employment branding i don't do recruitment it's like but hold on you do like whatever you put yeah. out is what i like we're we're the face of the company what I do in sourcing, what you do in recruitment marketing is the first thing people see. Um, mm-hmm. And more and more now, kind of like, they, they're not going to take a call with me unless they've done a lot of research on the company. And a lot of that is about what's out there with recruitment marketing and what we put out in articles. So, exactly. Yeah, no, absolutely agree. That kind it of means connected. Of it. And it's part of the nurturing as well. Like if somebody isn't exactly. in now, you're like, let me keep up to date with you. Like as you're doing, let me give you interesting articles by tech people and actually our alumni. What do they, mm-hmm. did they think about working for us? Um, yeah, that's what's going to help you nurture them on the long time. Exactly. And like I said, and also partly just the emails I sent to them, that's part of the recruitment marketing. Yeah. yeah. Telling them quickly about us and giving them links to these blog posts and articles and whatever. You know, you need to, so to me, to kind of disconnect the two is... It's just not right. Even the sourcing and recruitment marketing, because obviously I need the recruitment marketing for me when I'm trying to connect with people. Yeah. Because I need something to tell them about us. And then they have to have to have good stuff. Yeah. To share. And if I don't have that, what am I, you know, 
what am I going to tell them when I'm sourcing? Hi, <laughs> come work here. We're great. Yeah. I've got nothing to show for it. But never mind. Trust me. So you can't disconnect the two. They need to do that. And and like you said, sourcing being a junior recruiter role to me, because when I was in research as a researcher, and you had the recruiters, and they all had all the contacts with the company. So I felt like they get all the credit, but I'm the one doing all the work. Yep. So it's to me being a sourcer is that more difficult and more of a skill in my eyes than just the kind of the recruiter aspect the, the recruiter is like that's the whole kind of yeah it's the company management the relationship management but not for the not for the product the product is the people that we end up finding and yeah. the research you're just doing the sales job it's like that for me is the entry level like we've all done that yeah like exactly. we, we started in sales like every, anybody can learn that it's yeah. how do you actually deliver the product that you promised them? But That's it's, where you need me. Not only how do you find the candidates, but how do you engage with them? How do you make them reply? The identification piece is somewhat solved. Like everybody mm-hmm. can find the people. Yeah. The big problem, like the, the, the tough job is like, how do you get them to talk to you? Mm-hmm. How do you get them to be interested in actually looking at your company? Because we can all find them. They're somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and if they're not somewhere, they're probably not somebody we really want to find. But it's like, it's the engagement. It's like, that's why developers are getting hundreds of emails or phone yeah. calls or emails every week. How do you make yours stick out? Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, like they answer your third email because they took it as spam, but then something triggered them to actually look into it because they thought they got something diff, like, in, you know, something different for the third time. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh no, you're not spamming me. You're actually interested in talking to me. That it's about standing out and yeah having a good story exactly i need to get my 69 percent reply rate up i need to get up <laughs> more everybody 100 percent. no but you're not going to get 100 percent with just because you know using lever nurture like so you get 100 percent reply rate no you don't and also just because you use that doesn't mean you're going to get any replies no it's and what you put in there and and there's still going to be people like the timing isn't right i'm not interested like it's a reply but yeah it's about what's your positive reply rate and like and i said like i yeah i'd rather have people tell me like i'm not interested please don't contact me again because it's a reply i know i don't have to waste their time or my time but that i mean we do quite a lot of cool stuff here so the majority of of replies i get well they're not all positive but they're not like no i don't want to work for you guys ever it's more of a timing it's like no the timing isn't right but please keep in touch exactly like i'm i I just joined a cool project it works on really cool things like i have respect for your company but it's like it right now i'm in a really cool job no fair enough whereas if when i worked for the recruitment agency and i had various clients depending on the client some people could just go no you know don't want to work for that client so but i don't have that here really because we are we do do cool stuff and we have a lot of um everybody knows who we are and you know developing a product that everybody knows it's for developers is something interesting you know not just using some sort of back-end administrative system or a logistical company or whatever you know it's actually it's streaming streaming for one of the biggest tv channels in sweden so everybody everybody is in touch with it have, have seen something on that channel at some point you know and doing that and um, that we have a lot of users you know that we have a lot of you know, scalability that we have to do all that because you know it could be hundreds of thousands of people logging in at the same time you know how do you deal with that so we have and that's kind of when i'm when I, whatever ne- my next job is i'm a little bit kind of scared because it's it is such a good thing to work for a company that does do cool stuff Hmm. everybody has cool stuff it's about finding the right story and i think yeah. a lot of recruiters forget that um it's about sitting down with your developers or you know and what why did you join what are you working mm-hmm. on it's you don't always have the brand that's going to have the story where it's oh. like you, you have a cool brand and like you know they're doing some cool things sometimes it's it's the smallest thing that you would never have mm-hmm. known unless you talk to the people actually doing it you're know, like, tell me about what you're working on. They're like, this and this and this. And like, that's a good story. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's about picking them out and then seeing what works with, with the audience. Yeah. And, and obviously, if you pick that out and the people are not attracted by that, then they're not the right person. No, either. exactly. 
Because if you get it directly from the people that work with it and saying, this is the exciting things we work on, that's the kind of people you want. Exactly. If somebody else doesn't find that exciting, then they're not the right person for no. the job either. If people want to follow you or offer you uh, your next uh, assignment, <laughs> um, how can they best get in, uh, you know, keep in touch with you? Well, currently, I'm not really on that many places other than, than LinkedIn, really. I've got myself a Twitter account, but I don't use it, mainly for finding people than using it for myself. <laughs> so I suppose LinkedIn is the best way. Thank you all for watching. If you want to be one of the first ones to know about new shows, make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications.